I spent some time last week with Tony Sperano Jr., the offensive line coach for the Colts, and talked to him about a lot of stuff, about life, about football, about enthusiasm, all of that. And so you've already heard from him, but he spent some time with the media again today, and I just like him. And I like the energy that he brings to life. And I like being around that kind of energy. So here he is again, about 15 minutes of Tony Sperano Jr. And tell me if at the end of this, you're not ready to go out and hit somebody and protect Anthony Richardson. Tell me that. How do you, how do you teach that? You know, I mean, you try to keep everything as similar as you can in terms of teaching concepts. So, you know, within RPOs or within quarterback runs or certain things, you know, relative to the scheme that carry over through multiple plays. Mm -hmm. So you teach those principles and the things that carry over. And then the things that are different by play are less as opposed to trying to teach everything from scratch. You know, hey, look, guys, this play carries some of the same principles as this other one we've already talked about. Here are the, the real differences in it. So you're able to kind of put things in buckets for the guys and get them to play faster and a little bit more confident that way, I think. What, what was missing last year? Again, I don't want to speak much on last year. I wasn't here. So what, what, what to, to me, to me, again, I don't know what they were being – coach to do I don't know what the scheme was all those kinds of things that were unique to that my focus from getting here has been on the vision that I share with these players moving forward and how we've got to develop that identity and that vision and bring it to life out there to me dwelling on the past I just don't see a whole lot of relevance in it it's a new chapter again staff's new we've got new players the system's new Again, myself, my assistant, Chris Watt, who's been unbelievable, we're both new. So to me, the focus was instead of dwelling on the past and what was a different year and a different group and a different everything, right. let's build from day one what we want this to be moving forward. And to me, that's where all of our attention has had to be if we want to do this thing the right way. Quinn said you uh, never turn it off. You're always texting him or, or giving him tips. <laughs> so how has that relationship been like with him, obviously being one of those dudes on the line and then... Can you turn it off, or is it one of those things where it's like a gift and a curse for you? Uh, yes, I, I'll say this. I'm, I'm definitely guilty of what he said. 100% I'm guilty of that. Um, so, yeah, I've got I've become quite good at annoying those guys. Um, but, look, you, you know, yeah, when I get home with my family, uh, obviously I, I, I want to be as present and devoted to my wife and my kids as I possibly can be. Uh, when I'm here, and like Quentin said, sometimes it's after meetings, say hey, I might see something, or I might be going back through something, and I see just a little – Thing that maybe we might not have time to watch that the next day with a group but i see it and i'm like gosh i want this guy to see this because i think it could make a difference for him even if it's something small because to me the small details and everything you do are really the big things you know what i mean little details make the difference that's consistency in this league that's consistency as an offensive lineman and as a group so if i see something small i don't want to let it linger or, or, or hey maybe we don't have time to look at it in a meeting so I'll take a video of it, you know, I'll have the voiceover on it, or I'll text him and say, hey, look at this, you know, I see this, what are your thoughts on it, you know, and that way we keep the dialogue constant and, and guys are able to see little things that maybe the next practice, hey, that same thing might come up, and guys are able to, hey, all right, now we've talked about it, and they're able to have maybe a better rep than the last one. So it's just, just trying to do everything you can to, to be as good of a coach for these guys as I possibly can be. That's my motivation. How did you and Shane hook up? Because I, I – Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it didn't seem like you had a previous we did not. relationship. So how, that must have been the greatest interview ever. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I knew some people. We, we had some people that we knew in common. And, uh, you know, my, my, I think my name just got brought up, you know, with Shane. And he was interviewing different guys because his philosophy was to interview as many as he could and try and cast a wide net and find what he thought was the best fit for the job. And, uh, you know, my thought was to just go down there and, 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 and be myself and swing hard, do the best I could possibly do, and then just see what happens. And fortunately, you know, he, he wound up picking me. And, and I'm really, really grateful to him and to the organization for this opportunity. What, what do you remember about that interview? It was incredibly detailed. Really? Everything that you could possibly ask was covered. And, and I'm talking about from scheme, technique, vision for the room, mentality, um, what, what, who you are in terms of character and what values you have off the field, on the field with your players, um, in terms of the, the culture that he wanted to imprint here and, and how it, maybe I would fit into that, all that was part of it. And so it was, it was really in-depth. It was really thorough. And, and honestly, I'm really grateful for that process because I came out of it feeling like 
if they pick me, they want me for me, not right. me for maybe something they thought, you know, oh, hey, maybe he could be this or maybe he like they knew who I was when I left there and had a good impression of, of me and my personality and my style. So when he called me, uh, I, I was really excited because I, I felt like he picked me for me. Isn't that kind of unusual? Because most most coaches, especially first time head coaches, they go to what they know. Yeah, sure. It's very unusual. Yeah. You know, again, I'm grateful for it because I, I think that you can find some some really qualified, really good coaches that, that fit you. Um, you know, if you cast a wide net, I know when I was with Brian Dable last year in New York, he had a similar philosophy where he, he interviewed a lot of different people for, mm -hmm. for jobs and with the same goal in mind. Hey, let's find the best possible candidate for this job that will fit us, that will fit what we want to do so that we can really hit the ground running and have a shared vision. So I, I thought the process was tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, and, again, I'm just really, really grateful. Did you uh, talk with Pat Meyer at all about Shane and all that? Yeah, 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 yeah you know, absolutely. That's one of your, absolutely. Uh, one yeah. of your mentors there. Absolutely. So do you subscribe to a lot of the same Pat Meyer philosophies of, you know, pass pros a lot, like run blocking, where we want to be aggressive in pass pro. We want to go out and get guys. We want to be – it want to kind of treat it like run blocking. We want to keep our guys aggressive out there. It depends on the situation. You know, a lot of the things that I learned from Pat and that I that I worked with Pat and, and, and did in Carolina uh, – I believe in there's some things that I believe that are different and to me again pass protection uh, I think there's this misconception that there's one set that you take in pass protection yeah and that's not in my opinion reality um, you know I think it depends on the situation like what you're talking about you know hey what's the down and distance mm -hmm. what's the scheme that we're running is it a play action is it a drop back protection who am I going against what front is it how wide is that guy you know what I mean like all those things factor into Am I threatened maybe by someone in my inside gap for a right. game? All those things factor into how I'm going to take my set. It's not just a one-size-fits-all, hey, I come out and every time I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. It's it's predicated upon the look that we're seeing, the situation of the game, and the people, right? I mean, everybody's different. All the players are different. So I try to not take a one-size-fits-all approach to coaching. Yeah. You know, there's principles that, that I want us to adhere to. There's a style of play that we will have, but within that, I believe that you have to be flexible to, to do things that suit your players and their strengths because everybody's different. I have different strengths than my assistant, Chris Watts. He helps balance me out a ton. He's been incredible for me yeah. and for our group. You know, and, and that's I think that's part of being a good leader. Sorry, my no, bad. You're good. <laughs> but I think that's part of being a good leader is trying to maximize the people that you have around you in, in any role. And, and so, you know, I mean, it's... That's a little bit of a long answer, but to me, it's 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 about how can we put the guys in the best possible situation that we can put them in as often as we can. Yeah, that was you know? my next question. What that is, you know, if you have a guy who in college all he's doing is vertical setting, he's getting mm -hmm. back, getting depth. Then you have another guy on the other side where in college all he's doing is angle setting, angle, mm -hmm. angle, forty-five. Do you are you okay with guys doing different things on the other side, or do you kind of try to bring them up to the same level at both of those? No, sets? I teach I teach the techniques to the entire group. Yeah. Because again, I, you guys have heard me say it numerous times now, but it's about five is one. It's yeah. about a unit. We can't have guy. Hey, well, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. He's going to do that. Then all of a sudden, we don't know. I don't know where you're going to be. You don't know where I'm going to be. We don't know where he's going to be. And and it's also. We all understand the NFL, it's a marathon, right? It's a 17-week season now, 17-game season. There's injuries, there's things that happen where now, hey, somebody else has to come into the, the, the lineup. I want that to be as similar as we can across the board in terms of our techniques, the way we fit combinations, the way we set together, all those things, so that, hey, if something, God forbid, were to happen to one of the guys during the weekend, we need someone else to step in and start that weekend the guys playing next to him don't have to learn everything new for how that guy plays. So, yeah, there's definitely things as you get players that they were taught in college that maybe in terms of their style, um, they're used to one thing. I teach them, again, the, the things that I believe in for the group. And then it's about, hey, when do we apply those different things? Hey, when is an angle set more advantageous for you than a vertical set? When is a vertical set maybe better than an angle set? When can we treat it like run and go what I call short set? Go get on a guy. Set, exactly right. There, yeah. 100%. Like, when can we use those tools? It's about teaching them, again, the techniques, and then when do we best apply those to put ourselves in the best possible situation we can and all be on the same page? Because, again, if we're not all on the same page, to me, the rest of it's irrelevant. If you have five guys out there and it's five independent contractors, it's not going to be good. Right. Exactly. Aside from the X's and O's, what did you learn about offensive line coaching from your father? 
The thing I learned the most from my father is that you need to be genuine and authentic to who you are. Um, you know, his work ethic was incredible. He was obviously a really, really bright football mind, uh, but he cared a lot about people. Um, you know, and I said this last week, he, he loved the people he worked with. He loved his players, and it was genuine. It wasn't a uh, any kind of, of, of a facade or anything. It was real, you know, and, and I watched him be true to himself and, and coach his way in, in, in a way that he believed wholeheartedly in, and it gave me the, the courage to, to do the same thing. I remember when I was a young coach, you know, and you're trying to find your way and you're worried about, hey, am I coaching this hard enough? Am I doing this well enough? And, you know, gosh, I was 23 at the time or something like that. And I remember him telling me at the end of my first year, you need to just keep coaching the way you are. And it gave me so much confidence and belief. And I can be true to myself, have my own style and get to where I want to get to and get to where, hey, my group one day where we want to get to. So I just putting your heart into everything and being genuine. I think the number one thing that, that as a coach you owe your players is is being real, being honest, and, and being loyal. You know, I, I think if you do those three things uh, and you work as hard as you can to be the best you can for them, um, to, to me that's the most important thing. Did you ever want to coach a different position group or have you always been an offensive line? You know, I, early on when I started coaching, you know, I worked in a bunch of different groups. So, you know, I was kind of just trying to learn you know, I, I, they were trying to make me as well-rounded maybe as I could be. So, like, I spent a year learning quarterbacks with Marty Morning. You know, obviously, yeah. I don't, I, I, yeah, you know, I don't look like the prototypical quarterback guy, you know. I'm but I, I'm just, you know, I, I know you're shocked. You're like, yeah, it looks like you might be a <laughs> pass game guy, but I'm not. Runner. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm pretty well suited to the spot I'm in. Um, <laughs> but yeah, early on. Um, as soon as I got a taste of being in that group and, and truly understanding kind of what goes on in there, I appreciated it more and more and more and more, and it became where, what felt like home to me, right. you know, and it was always what I wanted to do. What is kind of, uh, Jim Bob mentioned, like, when you have a dual threat quarterback, it kind of shifts the responsibilities a little bit for the offensive line or maybe just gives a different flavor. So what is, I guess, did that mean when you have to account for what he could do back there? Well, I think it presents a whole lot of problems to the defense. You know, it is, it, it, it's a whole other element uh, that a defense has to prepare for every single week. They've got to be gap sound. They've got to make sure when they're rushing the quarterback that they don't let him break the pocket and get out because he, he's capable of creating explosives through scrambling. There's all kinds of design things. You mentioned RPOs, you know, quarterback reads, whatever they may be that we can implement uh, to use his skill set as well. So I just think it adds layers uh, that are beneficial to us up front because it allows us to be unpredictable and very multiple to a defense while still being simple for us. And I think that's really, really, in terms of scheme, a really important thing you can do. How much of that do you have to wait to see in a game? How much of that can be, I guess, done out here? Well, you try to simulate in practice. You try to make it as real as you can for the players and simulate. Uh, I know in terms of individual drills, I, I tell the guys all the time, I try to make everything as directly uh, relatable to an in-game situation as possible. I don't ever want to do something an individual that's not directly related to a scenario that we're going to encounter in a game. So you try to do the same thing with how you structure practice, whether it's different situations, uh, different periods of practice that have different emphasis. Uh, and then, I mean, listen, I, I know it's not, you know, hey, we're not always tackling everything, but those, you know, it, it, it's full out there. Those guys are going as hard as they possibly can and to, to put the work in and get the reps. So a lot of what you're seeing uh, will translate over. And that's the importance of, of the tempo of practice. If we can keep the tempo of practice high, right, when we're out there, everything's high energy, we're fit and everybody's going as hard as they can. Then all of a sudden when you go to the game, it's not a situation you haven't encountered before. Hey, we work that technique live against really good players that we have on our defensive front. So we go, hey, we go play Buffalo in a week. Hey, we've, we've, we've done that before. We've seen that before. That's the benefit of it. Also, the improvisation of the quarterback. I mean, he's kind of going to do what he does. He reacts to that, that situation. Mm -hmm. How do you get the lineman ready for that? I mean, listen, it doesn't – for us, we are straining to pass protect as long as he needs, period. There's not a time clock on our service. I tell the guys that all the time. <laughs> we, we are not uh, hey, look, we got him for two and a half seconds. As long as he needs, we're going to strain to protect him. So, uh, again, from that standpoint, that, that's our job. That's what we're doing. Hey, real quick, do you feel like you are continuing your father's legacy in some ways? Yes, I do. Um, 
I, I, I carry him with me all the time. Uh, I, I, I feel him, uh, I feel his presence with me all the time. And, and uh, I lean on the things he taught me all the time. Um, you know, I, it, it gives me a lot of pride to be able to carry on uh, his name in this business, something that meant so much to him. Uh, and that's a big motivator for me every day. I want to do the best I possibly can to be the best coach for these players because it's what they deserve uh, is to have a great coach. And, and I want to make him proud of, of, of me. So, um, yeah, I love him. I miss him every day. Uh, and it's funny, you know, he would tell me things when I was younger that maybe at the time I didn't understand. And as time has gone by, and it's not even just about football, it might be about life, you know, my kids. And I'll encounter a situation and I'll go, wow, that, that's what he meant, you know. Yeah. And, and so, I, in a way, I kind of feel like he's still teaching me things, even though he's gone. It's Tony Sperano Jr. I didn't know his dad, but I got to guess that his dad's proud of him because Tony Sperano Jr. is living his life. And the thing that dads want most for kids is what he was talking about. It's authenticity and it's about a joie de vie, right? It's about enjoying what you do as much as you possibly can. And, and you can tell that Tony Sperano absolutely does. And you can hear it in the voices of the offensive linemen when we talk to them. We've heard from Quentin Nelson. Quentin Nelson is talking more this year. He spoke for eight minutes that's like that's like greer garson at the oscars there's a dated reference talking for like giving an acceptance speech for 45 minutes like that is a a stupendous achievement this guy has so much enthusiasm for the game and for sperano as he teaches the offensive line position that he's willing to stand in front of us and talk forever love tony sperano jr